Well, hello and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. I'm here today with Irene Falcone from Nourish Life, which is a uh, an online store. But look, before we get there and learn about the history behind Nourish Life, just please tell us a bit about your history in the world of natural health and your love of tech. I love natural health first and foremost. Um, I actually discovered technology for the first time when I had to get a job, and um, so I'd been working in um, I'd been working in agency land on these beautiful accounts for mm -hmm. a really long time, booking ads in newspapers and magazines, and throughout that time, um, so we're talking 1993 yeah. through to the 2000s, I saw more and more people using things like mobile phones. Emails came into mm -hmm. existence, and um, I want to. And the internet. And the, well, yeah, and the internet came, and social media hadn't even come out no, yet. Yeah, that's right. I really wanted to get this job at Universal Pictures, mm -hmm. and so predominantly that role was doing the online stuff and all of the on online booking. And I'd yeah. only really booked magazines and press. I thought, holy moly, I'm going to have to learn everything I need to know about tech. And so I, um, so I quit my job, mm -hmm. um, and I had about. Um, a couple of months in between, I self-taught myself everything I could possibly know about technology and the internet. And I was researching things like um, uh, MySpace and um, how to do webs, build websites, mm -hmm. coding. I didn't know what they were going to ask me. <laughs> and um, anyway, so Universal Pictures um, ended up launching in Australia. Mm -hmm. It was um, done out of a company called U UIP prior to that. Yep. Um, and so sure enough, it launched and I put my application and said, I heard you'd launched. I'd love to work for, with you. And um, you anyway, I smashed the interview. You know what? <laughs> Do you know what? They actually, um, I actually came to them with a portfolio of all these digital ideas that I had. So I did that, got that job. Mm. And I started doing these micro sites for these films. Yeah. And then Facebook launched. And that's really when um, I just took off. just took off. And yeah. then I just ended up pretty much only doing the digital stuff for, for, for Universal. So I became really um, involved and really interested in, in all the sort of tech and all of that, that stuff there. Uh, I'm a bit of a gadget geek as well, mm -hmm. so... Um, Kindred spirit there. <laughs> yeah, actually I was gonna ask you, you know, um, I used to have, um, not the Palm Pilot, but it was like a Palm Pilot, but you could also talk into it. It was, was before it, the iPhone. Was it a Trio? Was it a Windows mobile phone? No, I think it might have been the Trio. Because the Trio was the Palm Pilot upgraded that had the phone inside. That's it. Yeah, I had trio. one of those. I was yeah. like, literally the only person in Australia that, that I had one. That well, had one I had one too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were great. They were for great. The, for the era, they were, they were the iPhone of the Euros. And you know, I have every single iProduct from day one, all in storage at my house, like every... That's, your, that's your retirement package. That's right. So, <laughs> yes. so I do love technology, mm -hmm. um, but I have to say, having my own business, I've been so busy, I blink and it's the world's moved on yeah. from technology and that's what freaks me out because I used to be an expert in it, ask me anything about MySpace, mm. but now like this, you can buy, you can get websites now online mm. for like $150 a month, like Shopify and things like that. But you couldn't get that back in the no, day. You had to build it yourself. Yeah, and so I started out doing WordPress and things like that. Anyway, so... Now you um, have staff to do that, right? That's right. But <laughs> hopefully we can still... Oh, we'll be on the same level. Oh, sure. All the tech well, stuff. Well, look, I mean, you were there in the pioneering days and, you know, it's like Bill Gates, you know. Uh, he was able to program in basic and do things and I remember some story where he got angry at his staff and stuff. I'll do it! And he did it. It's good to, to have that foundational knowledge because then it's harder for people to bamboozle you and you um, appreciate when... Uh, in the 21st century, things are working so much more smoothly than they did in the, when you started. Yeah, so my, exactly, and you asked me about natural products. You know, when I discovered that you could get alternatives to the mainstream junk mm. that I was putting on my body, I was able to marry this love for coding and websites and blogs and all that social media stuff mm -hmm. with my love for natural products. And that's really how Nourish Life was born. It was just the blending of my two passions. So. Now, I saw the uh, Current Affair story, which uh, you can watch at the Current Affair website, but also the uh, About Irene page on the nourishlife.com.au website. And you talked about how you had some sort of reaction to one of these products. And that's when you sort of looked into it more closely and you realised that a lot of these products did have these um, you know, artificial chemicals that were causing you uh, problems. Yeah, they were. And 
You don't think about it. I, I mean, I just, you know, I've worked on Revlon for years and years mm -hmm. and years and long time and I just love beauty products. I didn't think about what I was putting on my skin. I think I was putting like 500 different chemicals or three or 400 different chemicals on my body at any given time. Think about fake tan and sunscreen and then just layer and layer and layer and um, hair masks. And I masks. think you mentioned in one of your, on one of the pages on the side that a lot of lip gloss has lead in it. Lead in I mean, lipsticks. That's crazy. Why would you put lead on? Uh, why would you want to ingest lead? I don't think people realise. Well, they obviously don't. No, yeah. and it was, I, I only realised because I wasn't feeling well. I wanted to say, what the hell am I putting on my body? Um, and so, yeah, that's really what made me think about natural uh, products. And I threw air, out everything that I had in the house. And I, I think you said it was $5,000 worth of stuff over, over time you collected that you threw out. Oh yeah, I hope my husband's like saying this. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. it's, on your, it's on your bio. Is it? <laughs> is it? Yeah. And I think I didn't have anything else to wear. Oh, and then, you know, I had to go to a movie premiere. What am I going to put on my face? So that's why I sort of really had to find natural products. So, so, yeah. so what was the first product you found and how difficult was that process? Because we're talking, I don't know, a decade or more ago, it would have been uh, a lot more difficult to find natural stuff than it is today when you've got a whole store full of um, mm -hmm. stuff that... You know what's really funny? I did this... Um, when I was working at Universal Pictures, mm. actually, A Current Affair contacted me back then mm. and um, to do a story on my blog, yep. which was about like a woman throwing out all her products. Anyway, I didn't end up doing the, end up doing the A Current Affair stories. The, my bosses at the time didn't know if that was such a good idea as <laughs> I was still working employed with them. Yeah. But I went on the morning, the mornings, Channel yeah. 9 mornings, and in that interview, if you look it up on YouTube, they say to me, Irene, Natural products, they're very hard to find. Where did you get them from? And it's that was only, it was 2013. Right. That was only five, six years ago. Yes, yeah. like, now it's everywhere. I found one lip balm to replace um, the, one a, that you were using. the one that I was using mm. was like a, a petrochemical based one. Yeah. Um, I just found one lip balm and yeah, it wasn't that easy to find at all, but I just came across it through somewhere and I contacted them and there was this, they just started launching them. I contacted them and they were in this little town. You know, you can't buy them direct anymore. You mm. know, they have big distribution now. You can get it. They'll have grown too. Like David yeah. Jones can yeah. get it anyway. Yeah, exactly. But that, that was really how I started. And I just um, told people about this lip balm on my WordPress blog. And um, I put it on and probably took some photos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> you would, yeah, in the and Instagram the, um, mail room at, at, at my lunch break. And I said to the guy in the mail room, "Hey, can you post these off for me?" I sold like a hundred of them straight away. And um, I real, you know what I used? I used this WordPress blog mm -hmm. and this plugin that you could get a plugin, um, a, a shopping cart plugin for the blog. How yeah. good are the plugins at the time? Mm. They were great. Uh, and then I got a, a PayPal plugin, mm -hmm. and um, and that's how I did it. And so, and that sparked looking for more products and more products. Until today, more, you've got thousands. Yeah, more and more products. And then I realised I wanted a real website, not just a WordPress blog. And then it just, um, yeah, really. I mean, I don't know what happened. I started off with a lip balm. Now I have seven thousand products. Mm. Nine years later, and when you're just doing the business and it's your every day, um, you just. I don't know, you don't realise it just happened. <laughs> now, I know you have collections from Olivia Newton-John, Miranda Kerr, you have, uh, you know, and uh, other products. Are there any uh, products that you have made yourself? Oh, I did, yes. So, a lot of products that are organic and natural are really expensive. Mm. So, I thought, because I'm a store and I don't need to make a product and sell it to another store, I can have all that margin that, that you would pass on, um, that you would, you know, so make, make yeah. and, and put it back into making a yeah well i would just product. yeah oh well, actually i just passed that discount on to the customer mm. so that's why yeah so this is my <laughs> this is my favorite product it's um it's an sps 30 sunscreen which is natural in my home brand that i made um so there's a few things about this product that's interesting firstly it's pretty cheap because i don't have to sell it to another store i can sell it direct mm -hmm. so basically customers buy it for wholesale direct when they buy my range yep um but the other thing is is that i think this really dispels the myth that just because something is natural doesn't mean it doesn't work because mm. to be a sunscreen in Australia you have to get go through the TGA it has to get tested um, and go through the same scrutinizing that any sunscreen does yeah um, so it's great peace of mind knowing that you're putting something to you know protect your skin that is also um, natural and also um, better for our reef and our environment as well so um, so that's just an example of 
I'm getting off the topic of technology more into the no, but I mean, stuff now. But no, yeah. but, you know, I mean, to, to, uh, to, to make this, you would have had to have researched it, you know, checked out all the ingredients, uh, contacted uh, the companies that could make it for you. You know, there's technology involved in formulating it, in marketing it. And um, I mean, it's good to see that you have your own house brand. It's like uh, Kogan, you know, uh, he's got all his own house brands. Yeah. And uh, you have one too, which Absolutely. so you should, yeah. Thank you. And as it was a lot of research, there's actually nothing I don't know about sunscreen now. I think I know everything there is about sunscreens. And, you know, I mean, I remember hearing about one particular brand of sunscreen that was causing people, uh, you know, burns or whatever. Yes. Was, but, you know, yes. and so that, and you, that's why people are like trying to find things that are more natural because, well, they trust them more. And that leads me to our next question. On your site, you talk about how, you know, you have personal, like, well, I don't know if it's personal, but you have vetted all of these products. Yes. And there are like a thousand yes. ingredients that you will say no to. Yes. Which reminds me of Apple's ethos of a thousand no's for every yes. Because, I mean, it's easy to stock something and then, you know. Do they steal my idea? <laughs> <laughs> you, I, think, I, think great, first. <laughs> I think great minds think alike. Right? And so, clearly, uh, you know, you stand by that statement. Yes. And it's a major part. And that gives your customers confidence that, because, I mean, many of us will just grab something off the shelf and go. And that's obviously what happened with you originally and with all the different products that you were using and all the chemicals. And so, for people who are time poor because of their families and other things, they know that they can come to you and trust that, all the products in your store are natural or organic or don't have the various chemicals in them that are the bad ones. And that obviously shows your values and is something that uh, you've obviously stood by. Yeah, I because mean, I was one of those customers and I was in the supermarket and I've got four children mm. and I wanted to get something that was more natural and I'd grab it off the shelf. Mm. And when I got home, because it had a green leaf on it, it said the word natural Well, there's a lot of fake something. natural stuff, right? So many, right? Yeah. Well, it was green eco something. I thought I would grab that, and I get it home, and I look at the back, and it's full of junk. Yeah. I'm like SLS and this parabens and, and, yeah. and whatever, and you know, I mean, whether or not how harmful, like who knows. Mm, mm. But at the end of the day, why would anyone want to use something that was made sort of synthetically or man-made when they can get it from nature? That just I just don't understand that. Mm. And so for me to be able to check those ingredients for other mums is why I started Nourish Life. Yeah. So do you have any tech products in the store? Because we can um, see there's a lot of, uh, you know, creams and lotions and yeah. potions and probably supplements. I think things. for a mum, I'm yeah. really tech savvy. <laughs> um, actually, we do have a tech product. Yeah. It's the, can I put them on? Sure. These, yeah, you put them on. There we go. How good? <laughs> that is great. So, I mean, I know what they are, but tell us what these glasses are. Okay, so tell me if I get this right. Mm. Okay, you put those on mm -hmm. and then we have ones for kids as well. Mm -hmm. And some for women, they're really good looking. Okay, so what happened was, my um, one of my buyers came in one day and mm. she she had them on. I thought she looks really hot in those glasses. I thought that looks really she looks smart and hot. Mm. I, I need a pair of those. Are they just like fake <clears throat> fake glasses? Uh, yeah, like like in Tootsie where she puts her fingers through the. Yeah, the I just thought they were like. fashion glasses. <laughs> Anyway, how good are they? They block out the blue light that you get from, from your screens your and your devices. Absolutely. And I actually interviewed a doctor on my podcast about that. And, um, and she was explaining to me how important blocking... Okay, it's important for us, right? But our children, their retinas are getting damaged and we don't even know what the... Lo Sorry, you're a tech guy, but what is the long-term exposure mm. of all this blue <clears throat> light and technology to our children's eye health yeah um and so to be able to pop those onto your kids eyes to block out they don't block out all of it but to, to block out a percentage of blue light um for their eyes and not only for eye health but actually your kids can't go to sleep mm. as well well the blue light the, the reason light. why blue light is an issue yeah. is because apparently that's the spectrum of light that we get from the sun and that is a signal to our brain it's time to wake up so when you see the blue light, you're supposed to be it's supposed to be telling your brain, wake up, wake up. And if we are using our devices all night, you know, and we use them within two hours of going to bed, of course we're getting this blue light. Now on my particular phone, they're now starting to have these screen protectors that actually block out blue light as well. But the issue with that is that it only works on that one phone. But are, they work on yellow? My... are they yellow? No, no, no oh. you can see this one's not yellow. Oh. Uh, there are yellow glasses. I've got yellow glasses as well. But this this one is it a screen protector? That's a screen... That's what they do. Yeah, but oh. it, but it, but it only works. On this one so phone. I need to stock those. <laughs> well, you should. Yeah, it's it's called um, uh, from Zag. They're called IntelliShield, and they have this blue blue shield in them. But obviously, with a pair of glasses, every screen, every yeah. TV, every everything you've got that is emitting light 
This is filtering it out. I think it's also so, LED and other lights yeah. in your light bulb. I mean, you, as well. you need you need the two of them, right? You need yeah. one over there for your devices uh, because sometimes you can't wear glasses in bed for whatever reason. And you're still wanting to look at your phone. So, but yeah, so that is a tech product that people probably don't know they need. But I mean, I see a lot of the OPSMs and uh, spec savers. They mention that you can you can pay extra for a blue light filter. But for someone like me who doesn't need yeah. glasses as yet. Uh, you can you can have them. I have a different uh, brand that look very similar. These ones actually look a bit snazzier. But yes. So how much would these be going for? Oh, I don't remember how much they are. Well, you can um, have a look. It's Baxter I think Blue. They're on about the fifty dollars. Yeah, Baxter oh, Blue. Price. Yeah, well, so they're on our, our website. There's a whole section on them. Do they look good on me? They do. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look smarter. <laughs> well, this is often make us do that. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that people probably want to know from a tech aspect mm. is uh, you know what online. Um, sales platform are you using? Is it something like Shopify or Magento, or are you still using WordPress? Um, you know, what is the payment processor? Out of curiosity, and what is the newsletter software? Okay, well, actually, our, our website is um, when I started Nourish Life, mm -hmm. I could have got onto. I think it was called Volusion was around, and there okay. was a Shopify, but they were a bit crap back back then. I mm. think fantastic now, but they're a bit. Mm, and having come off WordPress, I wanted something really customable customizable and I wanted it to be really different and I didn't want anyone to copy me mm, mm. and also I wanted to be able to do all the SEO stuff in the back and I just wanted it to be me anyway so my um, my platform is a complete custom, custom. build from yeah. the ground up so it just uses HTML and PHP and all that cool coding stuff yep, that yep. I love that I learned um, so it's all done coded um so it's not on any platform at all so we use um a lot of apis mm -hmm. to plug into um supplies supply technologies and and, and so some things we can't code ourselves so we're just moving for example we've got our own reviews platform that's self-coded mm -hmm. we're now about to move to a different reviews platform because technology's moved on so far mm. and we can't always code everything to keep up with the best technology so yeah so sometimes we build those apis um, and then Payment Gateway, we use eWay. Mm -hmm. There's probably more now, but we, I just started with eWay. They've been around for a long time. Me, yeah, they looked after yeah. me from day one. And then the newsletter software to send people out? Yeah, we just use... Um, <laughs> MailChimp. Yeah, and Gmail. Gmail, yeah. <laughs> yeah MailChimp. Well, keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. Yeah, look, yeah I, know, I know the world's moved on, mm. but I don't know, sometimes there's so much technology, right? And I've seen other websites, other beauty sites, and they just have every single possible technology built in. Well, that slows, slows the site down. down. Exactly. The site can't scale. You have a Black Friday or Cyber Monday or yeah. Green Friday. You go on a current affair, thing. it crashes, yeah. right? Yeah. My website didn't crash. Wow, well, that's a, that's a, that's a. I got more hamsters. I, I more hamsters. <laughs> coded more hamsters on the, that wheel. Now, speaking of uh, Black Friday, yes. Uh, today it's. Uh, Thursday the 28th, so in America it's Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. although for them it'll be tomorrow because of the time zone differences. But do you have any Black Friday sales over this next, uh, you know, four days? And um, and I read that you're calling it Green Friday. I hate the word Black Friday. I It's awful. I don't think it makes any sense in Australia at all. And I'm very mindful of the bushfires and mm. all of those things. And, um, and I just don't feel right about calling anything Black Friday. On a day like today when everyone is just buying junk online, mm. I really wanted, normally I kind of boycott it. Yep. But I said, no, you know what? I'm going to use this as an opportunity. I Everyone's crossed, doing it at the moment. Everyone's see, doing yeah, it. Yeah. So I did write Black Friday on mm. the site, but I crossed it out and I wrote green. Yeah. And we're doing a big sale on all of these beautiful, sustainable products. So to, in order to get into my green Friday sale, mm -hmm. a brand needs to be on a plastic-free, sustainable, and you know, like a lifetime, like last a lifetime, so not single use and things like that. Mm, so yeah. um, things like stainless steel straws. And so I really wanted to make that that statement yeah. on my plat. And I love having a big platform where I can do that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. So nourishlife.com.au, it's on the front page. Yes, the front yes, yes. And is that extending till Monday or is it gonna all finish on Tuesday? Actually, no, it does run across Monday. Yep. So we send out our main newsletter every Tuesday. You know why we send it every Tuesday? Because back when I worked in agency, back in my Revlon days, mm -hmm. someone came and did a presentation. Yep. We were starting to send newsletters out for the first time yeah. ever in agency land because the yeah. internet had come about. And they researched and said the best time to send a newsletter out is 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. No yeah. Monday itis, no Friday. I don't know why. You know, well, Someone did some research, yeah. Yeah. and um, I think it was like ACP magazines told me. Anyway, so 
It makes I have sense. sent it. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. I was sent it out on Tuesdays at eleven AM ever yeah. since then, and we've never looked if the reset has changed. We just still send it out at well, Tuesday. It makes sense because yeah. Monday it's Monday night. So okay. Nobody wants to be at work. Friday yeah. you're thinking about the weekend. Yeah. Wednesday's hump day. Tuesday you've actually had a chance to recover from the weekend yeah. and Monday, right? So Tuesday eleven AM that, that kind of makes sense. That's okay. a good time. Is that good? When does the pay yeah. hit everyone's account? Is that Tuesday? Uh, I think that's Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Yeah. So what is the most popular product with your customers or popular products? Oh gosh, you know, with 7,000 products. Um, I actually, the No Pong deodorant. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite. I love No Pong. I could bring it. I, um, so I was going to bring a tin to show you, because, but I assumed you'd have it. I didn't check first. And this is, uh, I have the, I get the Bicarb Free one. Right, yeah, okay. Which, which is um, a dollar more or whatever. On, yeah. But that's great stuff. That is... Uh, you you just put a little pea size yeah, amount. Yeah, I used some this morning. <laughs> yeah, and you put it under your arms. You rub it under your arms, and what happens is the um, the, the uh, coconut oil and the other ingredients stop the bacteria from being able to grow. It's the bacteria that consume your sweat and then excrete the sweat. Makes That's sense. what smells. And it's, it's also bacteria. got the bicarb and whatever's in yours, probably arrowroot. It actually absorbs wetness as well. Yeah, well, I use the bicarb free one because it's an option. Uh, some people are. Apparently, get a white patch or something with bicarb. Yeah, they get itchy. And yeah, stuff so they it. so they had to make a bicarb free one, and I've just always bought that. Yeah, but I'm so pleased to see that you sell this every single day. That's on my top seller because yeah. that is awesome stuff. And of course, you were saying that to, to buy it from you, there's points. There's there's good reasons to get it from you. Oh and I'll yes, be don't forward. buy it anywhere. I just said, don't <laughs> stop buying it everywhere. Why did you sell it from me? Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your advice for anyone out there watching? You know, man, woman. Uh, Child, whatever sort of uh, age or gender, if, that they want to get into business and an online business, what is some sort of basic bits of advice? Oh, can I just say, I've been working like main media. Mm -hmm. Guys, you don't need to spend a million dollars on TV anymore. It's literally a Shopify site because mm -hmm. Shopify has come so far, like a, now, than yep. where it was. A, 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 Instagram's free, Facebook's free. Mm -hmm. Put a hundred dollars behind your post on Facebook, turn it that sell a thousand out of it or get an ROI on Facebook's about five times minimum. Um, you can start a company that that's all you've got to do now to start a company, ABN to get an ABN's free. Mm. Just start it and um, you know, make a product or, or, or find a product you love. Or drop ship the product. You don't mm. even have to hold the product. So I think um, it, never has there been a better time to start a business. Everyone now can be their own media channel. We don't mm. need to rely on on other people anymore. And I think that's exciting. Get your passion and put it down. And don't think you can't do it. Because I thought I can't do it, but it, I did it. And I'm not even, I mean, I'm techie, but I'm not even that tech savvy. And part of the, the pitch that uh, you get from... Um, your excellent PR people is that you started with a hundred or two hundred dollars and you turned it into twenty million. Yes. So you know anybody can do it. It's uh, I should be selling stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now we're doing a video uh, interview, and I noticed when I was watching your article on the current affair that you had a podcast. So tell us about your podcast, and are you going to also turn it into a like a TV show? Yes, yes, our podcast. So that's techie, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, so... Um, I, I had this stat. I was at StartCon, yeah. which is Australia's largest yeah. growth and startup conference. And there was a guy there talking about uh, podcasts. And you think everyone's got a podcast. And he said, do you know how many podcasts there are on planet Earth at the moment? I mean, we've got 7 million people. And people say, oh, you know, 100 million, 50 million. Apparently, there's only 700,000 podcasts on planet Earth at the moment. Unbelievable. So, you know, what he was saying was, start a podcast. It's so free to start a podcast, yeah, right? You can make a microphone. Channel. Yes, the podcast is amazing. We launched the podcast. It went straight to number seven on Apple iTunes. Wow! I know if people actually want to listen to what I've got to say. Is it weekly? It's every every Tuesday. Okay, yeah. <laughs> goes out with, goes out with the email. Does it it goes out with the email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's up every Tuesday. Um, I interview people, but I think I interview people on questions that I think everyone wants to know. Mm about, mostly it's about the, how all these brands came about, creators behind the brands. I mean, interviewed the granddaughter of, of Dr. Bronner, who made Dr. Bronner soaps, and he you know, he started that in World War II. It was like the first person to do natural soaps in, mm -hmm. the, in, in, the, in the universe. And it's, it's a really interesting podcast, so I do that. Um, but um, I met up with Rachel Finch, mm -hmm. actually, this week, because uh, she's launching um, a beautiful, um, some beautiful products. That I'm going to which launch you'll be stocking, yeah. which I'll be stocking yeah, um, yeah. in January, and I, I said to her, "Oh, we should do a video, and we, or we should do a podcast." And I was like, "You know what? 
I bet you you could video a podcast, right? You can. Well, yeah. you just you just put the tripod in the like camera. This. Make sure you put the phone on plane mode. Yeah. You can record the podcast the way you normally record it. But at the end of it, guess what? You have a, a video that you could stick up on YouTube. That's what we're going to do. Yes, so we're going to videotape it. So yeah. it'll be like this, and um, and we'll do the questions, and there'll be no room for error. Yeah. And um, and well, you can always edit it, but it's nice when it's just yeah. The, I, think I mean, it's nice when this it's video has not been edited. I'm just we're just having a conversation. And you can do that these days, you know? It's yeah, like, you It's can. like a TV show. Lucky I didn't swear, right? <laughs> <laughs> you would have had to beat me up. <laughs> so I, I always like to finish with three questions. Okay. And one is just about the future. You know, yeah. you're uh, in the natural health industry and you've helped actually to probably, I guess, popularise it. Although there's, there's people out there doing it, but clearly you've had great success. Well, I'd like to think I drove it. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, when I started... There was very few. I called... I, I called magazines up. I said, I've got natural products. Can we put them in your magazine? And they said, no. We can't, no one know, cares about your natural products. The world is not ready for you yet. Now they're bidding a path to your door, right? Well, now I'm like you open up a magazine and it's just normal now. Mm, but, um, mm. so and to think that was only 2013. I mean, in this last decade. Five years ago. Crazy, crazy. So how do you think the tech industry and the natural health industry, those two industries, whether together or intertwined, yeah. are going to evolve over the next five to 10 years? We've just about hit 2020, so that's a whole new decade of yeah. like, the age of enlightenment for, for natural products has come. Yeah, actually I think that, um, and I, a current affair asked me a similar question, but they did, they cut it. It's on oh. the floor and they cut it on the floor. <laughs> well, you, well, we'll, we'll happily air yes, it here. Yes, I wanted, to, tell I wanted to, to say that I think that the next evolution is about the health of the environment and it's gonna be more about um, complete and utter um, zero waste, and yeah. I, I wanted to tell you about this brand here. Actually, you know this product here was um, created by uh, Bindi Irwin for okay, a, no. a company called Atik. Yeah, and they do everything you can imagine for your head to toe, even cleaning products in a bar with no plastic, no packaging. I just heard about uh, recently. Read, I don't think it was this brand, yeah. but there were these um, shampoo and conditioning sort of soaps. That you could use a body wash as well. Okay, so these are the first people that did that. Right. And um, look at that. Yeah, so it actually says down replaces. The here. It's a solid conditioner for normal hair. Yeah, so it replaces like three or four bottles. It's probably on here. And this is the shampoo. It's shampoo. And, it, and you leave it in your you leave it in your bathroom and you just use it every time you have a shower. Yeah, it replaces five bottles of conditioner. And it's completely compostable. So this plastic, you just put it in this plastic, this cardboard, <laughs> plastic, yeah. this cardboard. You put in a, you can open it. Yeah. You put it in your um, in your compost. in your compost, and it's zero waste. And I think <clears throat> that that's the next evolution mm. of all products. Look, remember when they used to have uh, all those containers <clears throat> of um, just washing liquid, you know, for your clothes, and they were big containers. You know, and all of a sudden they, you know, for environmental reasons, for costs, they became smaller. So, I mean, it was a concentrate. So you had to pour less, and uh, but the bottles were smaller, the costs of manufacturing was smaller, they used less water. Well, this goes to the next level of not having any liquid at all. It's just, it's just the bar. Yeah, I actually did a podcast with her as well. I, I, I did, asked her, how do you do this? Mm. And she just explained, well, this is just what's in seven or five bottles of conditioner and it's without just the water. Concentrate, yeah. yeah, and then without the plastic. And it's amazing, no one's thought of that before. You know, it's like. You know what? She, when, she, oh, she, when she first contacted me to, yeah. to sell her brand, um, it didn't look like this. Yep. And um, I saw it and I thought, no one's going to buy into this shame. No one wants soap yeah. in their hair. This yeah. is just going to be like soap. And I gave it away to my team mm -hmm. to use. Yep. And one and of our, raving about yeah, it. one of our girls in the office is like this full on. She's obsessed with the environment. Mm -hmm. And she said, "This is so good. My hair feels so amazing." And I went, "Really? Oh, give me another look at this. Yeah. Let me get another look at this." And I rang her. I said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it." And um, and now I think this has now gone on to be the most sustainable brand in the world. I think they've won some and, awards. And how long have we had it for now? Oh, so um, months, uh, maybe since 2015. Okay, so it's been around for four years. Yeah. Four or five years. Yeah, but it's only, I think, see, it's only just taking off now, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so you can get this in Priceline as well now. So mainstream stores. Yeah, are mainstream. Taking, yeah, so I think that's the future. Okay, well, great answer. So my second last question is to you know, change gears a little bit and just to ask you if you could please share the best advice that you've received to help you get where you are today. Okay, the best advice I've ever received mm -hmm. is no matter what you do, stay in your lane mm -hmm. and stay focused on what you do <coughs> and don't look at what our, your competitors are doing. There's people that 
um, spend time worrying about what their competitors are doing and not focusing, and not focusing on what they're doing mm. uh, um, are, lose, uh, uh, are losing all, all of that momentum, momentum that they mm. can have in their business. Everyone has their own audience. I know this for a fact because I've tried it myself. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't look at any, any competitors, right? Yeah. Sometimes, some of the people from my team say, oh, so-and-so has done this, we should stock it. I went, I don't think we need to stock that. I don't think it's right for Owens. Yeah, but it's got a really big, big they're getting a lot of stuff on Facebook about it. People are really liking it. Mm -hmm. All right, fine, stock it. You know what? After I'll, you've checked all the ingredients. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then no one buys it from me. Yeah. Right? Well, because you've got to go with your gut. You've got to go with my gut. I, my know, I know what my yeah. audience want, mm -hmm. and I only stock what they want. I don't look at what other people are stocking. And so my advice is, no matter what you're doing, no matter what industry you are mm -hmm. in, just focus on your own audience and what you're doing. And I think that's the best advice. I, you know who gave me that advice? <laughs> Sonia Diver from Eco Tan, certified organic um, fake tan range that mm -hmm. was has been around. She was the first fake tan range. I think in the world, certainly in Australia, mm. and I, I, I um, and it's one of your top selling products too. One of my top selling products. I use it myself. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the mousse is amazing for all the female listeners. <laughs> really good. The mousse is beautiful. Um, but um, I met her at an organic expo way before I even started Nourish Life, mm -hmm. and um, and then when I started Nourish Life and I ended up stocking her, I asked her for some advice, and that's what she told me, and that is could not be more true. And every time I look sideways. She reminds me to, to come back and focus, focus on what focus, I'm doing. Yeah. Mm. I read or I heard someone say once that what someone else, what others think about you is none of your business. No, nothing. Because people are worried about what the Joneses are up to or no. other people. It's like, just get on with your own I thing. I agree, yeah, you know? absolutely. So what is your final message to ITY viewers and readers? We're probably slightly surprised to see a natural you know, health products uh, segment, <laughs> but we've had infused plenty of tech in, into it and your whole business is online. You know, you're, you're a tech success. So what's your final message to ITY viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners? Oh, that's a good question. You know, everything's tech. Mm. I want to say, leave what I say, everything's tech. If you're an online store, you're a tech company. Mm. Um, if you are, so if you're pure play, you're tech. Kogan's tech. If you're um, omnichannel, you're tech. So, I mean, I've seen things like Sports Girl and, and things like, um, and other clothing stores where you can go in there and it's tech and iPads and trying on clothes virtually and, and stuff like that. I think tech now is part of our lives mm. and it's no longer separate. It's no. not lo no longer, oh, this and tech. It's everything tech. When they said you were coming to do an interview with me, I thought you were a print magazine. I had to quickly go, <laughs> quickly put some mascara on and I was going to be on video. Yeah. That's a perfect example of um, everything, everything tech. is tech. Yeah. You are a, you're a publication, but you're, a, you're online. online. Of course you are. Yeah. Of course you are. I mean, they say that a technology has succeeded when it's invisible to our life. Yes, you know, and was, I think we're there. There was a time when someone walking down the street talking to themselves was crazy. Yeah. Now we know they've got Bluetooth, or at least we think they've got Bluetooth. You know? And I've got the white things out of my ears. I'm That's having it. a conversation with someone. I don't think, oh, I'm putting tech now and I'm now having a conversation with my AirPods or whatever. It's just the natural part <laughs> of your natural, life. It's yeah. invisible to your it's life. It's invisible. Yeah. And I think that's where we are. And I think embrace it, love it, wear the glasses so you don't get sore eyes and um, and try and keep up. Well, Irene, thank you very much for your time. It's been <laughs> thank a real you pleasure so to much. meet you. Thank and you. And I'm looking forward to becoming a customer. Yes. And uh, check it out, nourishlife.com.au. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.